Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play DMC Devil May Cry. Today we are not actually playing the base game DMC Devil May Cry. Instead, we are going down to Virgil's Downfall, which is the DLC epilogue campaign where we are going to be in Virgil's shoes instead of Dante's. And as expected, he comes with his own unique playstyle. And the campaign itself is quite a bit different from Dante's. to us, Father. Dante betrayed me. There's nothing left for me here. So something that I like about this right off the bat, aside from the art direction, which I've been a big fan of throughout the entire game. Listen. You hear that? It's the sound of not too much going on. Until right now, until a fight starts up, it's a much less busy soundscape, and even here in combat, that is such a wildly different audio experience uh, than the base game. So I think what's striking about the ambience of Devil May Cry 1 through 4, but especially the first two games in particular, is how stiflingly quiet they are. They have the, you know, the big explosive action beats baked into the, the spike in intensity that you get whenever a fight starts up. But just walking around, it's it's stark and silent and really tense. I think people tend to overlook that because of how flashy the cutscenes are and the fights and stuff. But the cooldowns in between are really just that. They're they're cold. DMC, by comparison, is really in your face all the time with these big thumping tracks. And they're there even in the ambient moments. And that's not wrong or bad, but it's very different. Virgil's downfall uh, kind of harkens back to something like DMC1, though, with how quiet and almost suffocating it is. It works really, really well, because you spend time just waiting for that shoe to drop and for things to start popping off, and it's tense in the meantime. I'm trying to aim for that ledge... And then, so this is kind of a weird jump. Yeah, because there's a little bit of an invisible 
ledge just around the corner that I'm trying to skirt around. And this is intended. <laughs> There's a health cross fragment there. Then that looks like it's gonna be hard to make, but it's uh, not too bad. The first time that I did this campaign, I didn't realize that Virgil had Dante's angel boost technique. So I did all of the jumps, all of these jumps that looked like they would be impossible without the angel boost, uh, without it. Just didn't realize that was a thing. Did it all with the midair of the... <laughs> and just kind of banged my head against, wow, they, they really stepped up the platforming in this. It's It's... Super precise. No, I'm just stupid. <laughs> I was just really dumb. Oh yeah, the wisps are super cool. Uh, so you have to hit them with the summon swords, which if you're familiar with the games, or even if you're not, they replace the uh, the gun or the shoot button. They replace ebony and ivory, basically. So you gotta tap them with that. Also, we basically have the uh, the angel and the demon lifts, the whips, uh, in the form of like trickster style teleports. You'll either teleport towards an enemy for the angel version of uh, the summon swords or the demon version when you're holding the right trigger down will pull enemies towards you and kind of teleport them at you like that. And again, if you're listening closely, you'll hear something that distinguishes this campaign from the base game. And it's that this soundtrack is not done by Comba Christ. It's part of what makes the atmosphere of this so different from the base game. Uh, from the base game. This is actually Jason Graves' work that you're hearing. And you can hear the stylistic similarity to Dead Space, I think. Uh, and that's because he is the series composer for Dead Space. Yeah, you can definitely hear that style. It is distinct. Uh, so right here, we're going to use the Divinity Statue and spend our first ever upgrade point on Virgil. He does not come with enemy step by default, but he comes with all this good stuff. Uh, the trickster dashes. And we'll be putting some po uh, some points towards Summon Swords later, and also judgment, uh, judgment Cuts. Wow, I can't speak today. And a couple of other things. Right now, we are just going to invest in Slasher. And that will eventually change up how this basic combo works. Oh, these heavy reds. Okay. Love them. There's a lot of really nice contrast going on as well. Uh, so I... Oh, unless you, uh... Lest you kind of worry that Virgil's not going to be all that complex, or this is all that he has going on based on that move list we just saw... Uh, his move set does expand quite a bit over the short uh, over the the short duration of this campaign. But there's more to it than meets the eye based on uh, the skill tree that you just saw at the divinity statue. Now that being said, uh, I don't think he's quite as interesting as the 
Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition rendition of Virgil, where they really went all in on giving him a completely uh, unique combat identity. Uh, we have our trickster-style teleports, which is when you dodge without holding a direction, you'll either trick up into the air, or you'll come down the same way. Uh, we have the angel and the demon lifts, the angel boost that we saw, his summon swords, and a really basic Yamato move set for the time being, uh, which will expand using the same kind of left and right trigger modification system from the base game that worked out so smoothly. I don't see where I'm supposed to boost to to get back up. Uh, I can just take the fall and take a very small amount of damage and that will put me back up top. And that's fine. Just as a shortcut. He does fight differently, uh, and more deliberately, which I think is is very fitting for Virgil. Uh, and it's it, it's definitely what they were going for with like the concentration meter in DMC4 SE, uh, just without that unique mechanic contextualizing the rest of his action and kind of setting him apart that much more. He does fight differently, but it's more like if Dante just had a bunch of new weapons. Uh, mechanically, it's not like Nero to Dante or Virgil in 4, where they all work in completely different ways. So new move sets, but not necessarily an entirely different way of approaching combat. That being said, I still really like this DLC in this campaign. And the way Virgil plays is refreshing, if nothing else. And I think his basic moveset I like a lot more than when we started Mission 1 of the base game, uh, with just Rebellion and Ebony and Ivory and Rebellion's early moveset. And because this campaign is not all that long, it's going to expand and we'll get some new tricks up our sleeves pretty rapidly, even more so than uh, in the base game. Wow, that jump is not impossible, but it's very difficult to make with that angel boosting. <laughs> God, that is so stupid. Also, these teleports are so sick. So I really like this all blue arena. Like they do such interesting things with color in this one. I mean, the, the art direction in DMC is difficult to assail in the first place, but especially here, I, I feel like they just went even harder on their on one of their biggest core strengths. Okay, so we have to watch the wisp. Sometimes the Wisp will come hurtling towards you. Normally, its range will extend when it's triggered like that, or when it goes into its Berserk state. It's basically uh, the same as when enemies would pop their Devil Triggers in uh, prior Devil May Cry games. And now we have the Double Wisp fight, I think. Along with a bunch of... Oh, shit. Oh, and they're... Mmm, the... Them being flanked by crows is also pretty cool. It's just a really awesome design. I feel like you can definitely see elements of some of the Hellblade enemy designs that would come in the future. Um, from when this was released, you can see bits of that gleaming through, you know? You can see the, the early DNA of that showing up here. Man, Hellblade's so fucking good. I wish I could LP that, but I mean, that, that game seems kind of antithetical to LPing, given how focused it is on the game's audio. Like, how big a part of it it is. Virgil, wait! You're in danger! Hey, Virgil! You're not going anywhere. How does it feel, brother? Again. 
Alright, so we're gonna figure out what that was all about next time. For now, that is gonna do it. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one.